On November 30th, 2013, I went out to a friend's birthday party. And about two weeks later, I went out on a date with the guy I'd met from her birthday party. September 2016, we moved in together. On February 4th, 2018, he proposed. I said yes. May 18th, 2019, we got married. And now on May 22nd, I'm filming this video. We've been married. We just passed our one year anniversary. Hello. My name is Sarah and this channel is Sarah Refined. I have always loved personal development and self-improvement, but the first year of marriage has probably taught me more than any book or video ever could. Today I wanted to share three of the things I learned about myself in this first year of marriage. The first thing I learned about myself in the past year is that I don't share credit very easily. I'm kind of selfish and I think that's very human, but it just surprised me. I didn't realize that I was as much as I really am, if that makes sense. To better explain it, when it comes to big things like the house and the fact that I haven't stressed at all really about not being able to work the past two months, I can easily and freely share that credit with my husband because without him, in fact, none of that would be possible at all. So I guess when it's our success, I share it freely. But where I struggle is acknowledging his part in my success. For example, I went to school, did my massage education, and got the job and started making the money. Yes, that was me. I did the studying, I put in the work. But he was the one who initially encouraged me to look into post-secondary education because he knew I did not want to be a server my whole life. So to give credit where credit is due, I wouldn't even have my job and my career if it wasn't for him and his encouragement. Another part in more of a day-to-day -day life that I noticed this is with chores around the house. Cooking, cleaning, washing dishes, cleaning bathrooms, all that stuff. When I do it, I of course appreciate when he says like, thank you, or he acknowledges that I've done it. But when he does it and he's gotten the chores done or he's taking the garbages out and he says something like, never say thank you. My reaction is more along the lines of like, why do I have to say thank you? These are, you live here, this is your contribution. But at the same time, I know I like it myself. So why am I reacting that way? And just for the record, I do say thank you to him because I really appreciate when I get responses like that. That being said, it's more about my attitude than my actions, I guess. So that was the very first thing I learned about myself in the first year of marriage is that I am very selfish with time and acknowledgement. The second thing I learned about myself in the first year of marriage is that being vulnerable does not mean I lost. I'm not sure if it was intentional or unintentional, but somewhere along in my childhood, I I accepted a truth that basically says the first one to cry, apologize, or make amends lost. You are now weak. You are now vulnerable. You lost. Lost what? I don't know but it was important to win. Communication has always been really important to me and I do go more in depth about that in my previous video. You can actually, I'll link it right here. Three things I learned about relationships in my first year of marriage. But even though I often start the conversation towards reconciliation in an argument, I realized I'm not very comfortable taking responsibility, I guess, for the fact that maybe my actions and my words and my attitude could just be the final stopping point. Normally, if someone gives me constructive criticism, I'm like, cool, we're sharing. So here's what you could also do to make this better. And that's not always the case. I think that leaving it on me makes me feel very vulnerable and like, okay, cool. <sighs> I'm the one that has to put the work in now. I have to change. I have to be fixing something so I can be invincible. But knowing that I might be the problem doesn't mean I lost. It just means there's something more to improve on. And there will always be more to improve on. An example I'll share is a very common argument we have about misinterpreting tone. Dustin will often just repeat things to me that I have already told him. You see a great example of this one in one of my older videos where I cut his hair. And we've had this conversation quite a bit and he's told me he's not repeating what I said because he thinks I'm stupid and don't understand it, which is how I take it, but he's just doing it because that's his way of clarifying things. I hear that and I typically respond with, okay, fine, I'll work on receiving things, but you can work on your tone then too. If I say something like, don't forget to like this video and subscribe, you can respond with, Okay, just to be clear, we don't want to forget to like this video and subscribe. Is that right? Rather than your usual tone of, Okay, Sarah, don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And lately, I've been learning how to listen to, you can work on how to receive things, not everything is an attack on you. And instead of feeling attacked, I'm trying to keep my guard down, practicing feeling safe, accepting criticism. Because the truth is, I can work on how I receive 
feedback. So the second thing I've learned about myself in my first year of marriage is that admitting I'm flawed does not mean I am as vulnerable as I think I am, and it does not mean I lost anything. The third thing I have learned about myself in my first year of marriage is that I have a lot of emotional baggage that I have to take some responsibility for. This one's a pretty recent discovery. There are some things about myself that I just don't entirely understand. Like, why do I absolutely see red anytime anybody says anything remotely condescending to me? And why do I absolutely lose my mind every time the blender starts grinding and smelling like metal? And why am I so intent on making my husband deal with his past trauma and come up with all of it while acting like I'm a saint because I'm already working on mine? Maybe to make myself feel better? Thanks to something called shadow work, I've discovered that the reason I go ballistic when blenders and technology don't work is because because I never really learned how to problem solve when the toys didn't work. When I got frustrated with the toy, my mom would tell me, Sarah, don't let the toys win. That did not soothe me then, and it does not soothe me now. If I went into a famous red-headed temper tantrum because the toys weren't working, my mom would sometimes add on, I guess it's broken, or I guess we're throwing it out. Now I do think this is a little bit funny looking back on it, but what I'm also understanding is that while I don't know why I get so frustrated with toys and blenders and computer stuff when it doesn't do what I expect it to do, I do know that I really never learned how to troubleshoot or how to solve a problem when it came to technology, because our go-to method was Sarah gets mad with the toy, Sarah does not leave the toy alone, so we throw it out. And it is so hard. It takes so much strength for me to turn off the blender and think, hmm, it's making that grinding sound. Maybe something is stuck or it smells like metal. I'm gonna Google it and see if that's normal or not before I throw this blender out the window, which I really wanted to do the last time I made a blender smoothie. Even talking about it, it's making me like, oh, I hate when things frustrate me. The fact that I didn't learn how to troubleshoot mechanical errors and blips is not my fault. However, how I deal with that frustration now is my responsibility. I have spent a lot of my life blaming other people for things that they did that contributed to me being screwed up. But in my first year of marriage, I have learned that I need to take responsibility for all my actions and reactions that have also contributed to screwing me up. And that brings me to the very end of this video. The three things I learned about myself in my first year of marriage are that I am a little more selfish than I kind of realized before. Being vulnerable does not mean I'm weak or that I lost. And finally, I have a lot of work to do and behaviors that I can take responsibility for. Anyway, my husband and I have been together for five years, I think, before we got married. Five and a half years before we got married. And I always thought that being married versus living together wouldn't really be that big of a difference. But now that I'm a year in, I think there is a big, big difference. And it's so subtle. I don't really, I don't know if I can put my finger on it. Something about it has just made me want to be a better person. And it's been humbling. And I think in the past year, I've become kinder and more humble and more mature. I guess. And so if you're married, did you find the same thing that there was a difference between dating and marriage? And if you're not married, but you live with a partner, do you kind of think that's going to change? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below and discuss it. But thank you so much for watching this video. That's all I have for you today. Please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video if you thought there was something interesting and worth learning and worth sharing in it. And if you haven't seen my other video in this series, please feel free to watch it. I'll link it down below and also up in the corner. I will see you over there.